Thank you, Madam Table Topics Master. That's a really great question. Now what? So has that ever happened to you? Have you experienced that deja vu? Do you know what deja vu is? Deja vu is the feeling that you've been scared just like that before. It's a little different than the one you're used to. So I've come to talk to you today about table topics or impromptu speaking, because that's what I like. I'm pretty good at it. I, I'm not world champion good, right? But I've, I've won a lot of contests, table topics contests. Now there are two that stick in my craw. There's two that I lost and I'm not, not happy about losing those two. One of them was at a contest where the guy, and I. I can't remember his name, it was like Jerry or Gary or Lucifer or <laughs> something like that. And we'll just call him the Spawn for now. And in the contest, it was a sp actual speech contest, area level. He won table topics contest, he won the speech, international speech contest, and he won the raffle for the night. <laughs> and I just never had a chance. I probably could have had the best table topics ever, but I had no way to come up against that guy. It was terrible. Now the second time, there was a fella who told a, his table topics, it was about kids, and he told this real tearjerker. How do you get a tearjerker story about your kid peeing in the toilet, <laughs> right? And, and mostly those stories are only good for parents. Parents love to hear little kids stories. And I'm a parent, so I voted for him. So I lost. What I want to do is I'm going to tell you three and a half techniques that you can use in your table topics or any sort of impromptu speaking, OK? Now, first one's really good. Uh, just use an analogy. An analogy. Let, you know, life is like an analogy. You've heard that, right? You can do, say they ask you something and you don't really know anything about it. How about that crisis in the Middle East? These two leaders, how can you get them to get along? I don't know those people, but I know there's a conflict. And at Thanksgiving at my house, we get every, all the family together. My Uncle Harry and Aunt Fran, the whole time, <laughs> fighting and fighting and fighting. So we just listen to them. We try to advise. We, we know we can't handle it. We know we're not going to fix them. So we just let them go. And so that's what I think we should do with the Middle East. See how I did that? So it's an analogy. I don't really know about the Middle East, but I know about my family. So ultimately, one of them is going to kill the other, and somebody will win. And I mean my relatives, not in the Middle East. Right? Now, another thing you can do is to go extreme. If somebody says, do you know the sales tax is going up a penny? So extreme. The sales tax is going up a penny. I don't think a penny is enough. I think it should go up a dollar. Maybe $10. Sales tax, every dollar you spend should be $10. A pack of cigarettes would cost 15 bucks. That's expensive cancer, right? So, but imagine all the money that goes into the state coffers. Like the schools, what would the schools look like? They'd be grand opulent palaces with sidewalks made of gold, right? The kids would be carried from room to room. Wouldn't that, don't your children deserve that? That's an example of going extreme for your subject. Now here's the half a tip. You could go the converse and go extreme, right? Do the opposite and go extreme. So sales tax is going up a penny. A penny, look, it's already, what is it, seven cents, something like that? I think we should just get rid of the sales tax completely, okay? We don't need sales tax. What good is spending all this money on schools, right? Kids learn everything they need to know from the interwebs, right? They got it. They're, they watch Dora, they can learn Spanish. It's, it's, everything's already set up. We don't need schools like this anymore. Do you understand? So that's how you go the opposite and make it extreme. And people like to laugh, and generally that'll be pretty funny. Just going extreme is usually funny. And get animated when you do it, that helps. I'll use my own advice. And a third one, and this is good, because some topics don't really lend themselves to extreme. So what you might do is go emotional. Have an emotional story. Tell a story from your life. Use vivid 
visuals and smells, but get to the real emotion of it for you. I, I told a story once about a Halloween that I went on, why I didn't like going trick-or-treating, because when I was seven, I got pushed down by some big kids and I hurt my hand and they stole all the candy. Now I told that story bigger, because I had three minutes, now I only have 12 seconds to say it, but it's, you share an emotional story, something people can relate to, and they go, oh, and then, they, then you got them, and you win, and you win. So those are three and a half tips that you can use, okay? now. Impromptu speaking is just like a prepared speech. A prepared speech, you make it up, right? This is impromptu, you get to make it up in front of people. And we all like to witness creation, right? Isn't creation awesome? Except for the evolutionists, they don't like the whole creation thing. But so get up, go out, and make stuff up.